So today I'm wanting to talk about a few tips that I think can help you guys pass your electrical FE on the first try. My first tip is for those of you who are still in school or just recently graduated from college. Take that exam now. If you wait until you get a job, things are going to start piling on and before you know it, you're four years down the road wanting to take your PE, but guess what? You still haven't taken your FE. And I can promise you at that time, you're not going to remember how to integrate by parts. It's just not going to happen. So do yourself a favor now and take the exam. My second tip is know what you're going to be studying. The FE is a big test. It's a tough test. It's scary. But guess what, guys? It's not that much different than what we saw in school. The basic rules still apply. Whenever we were assigned a test in school, we would always ask the professor what we could expect to see on the exam, like what topics would be on the exam, how many of each question would be on the exam, and guess what? The FE has an awesome form that breaks down the topics that will show up on the exam, as well as how many questions you can expect to see of each one of those topics. On the NCEES website, it actually breaks it down for you. And I'm gonna show you in this next video clip how to navigate their website to get this form. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is search NCEES.com. That will pull up the NCEES main webpage. Um, you'll go to engineering, scroll down this page until you see select an exam you'll select FE exam. On this page, it gives you just some basic information about the FE exam, but for what we're looking for, you scroll down to exam specifications, and you look for your exam. Since this is the electrical we're looking for, I'll click on this, and this will be a PDF of that breakdown I was talking about. So it's broken into 18 sections, I believe. Yep, 18 sections, and the, this bold uh, numbering on the right side of the page is how many questions you can expect to see for each uh, topic, 1 through 18. And that's basically it for this form. Very useful. I would put this, commit this to memory for you guys. It will be very useful on your exam. So now that you know what topics are gonna to show up on the exam, let's talk about the formula sheet that you're provided with in order to do the FE exam. So this is that formula book that I was talking about. It's actually called the Reference Handbook. And in order to get a PDF copy of this, all you have to do is go on NCEES website and create an account. And then you'll have the option of downloading a free PDF version of this Reference Handbook. Uh, that's the website we were just on. You're going to have to make an account anyways to sign up for your FE exam. So I highly recommend that you guys go on and take advantage of this free PDF. Um, there might be a more recent version available now than whenever I took the exam, so be aware of that. But you're going to want to know this handbook like the back of your hand. Um, there is formulas for just about anything in this handbook. And you should keep in mind that the exam is now computer-based, which means that this handbook is also going to be a PDF copy while you're taking the exam on the computer you're taking. So that means you're going to be able to use a search function on it. So just to show an example of how this is useful, say I wanted to know the area of a sphere. I'm going to search that. Just type in sphere. Go through a few of these and then look at that area of a sphere, 4 pi r squared. So that's just a basic example. You could do anything from like flux or um, what, what have you, current. I mean, it. you can search just about anything and this reference formula book has anything and everything you can think of. So it's a very effective tool if you know how to use it. So something else you guys are gonna wanna know how to use really well for the exam is your calculator. So we're back on the NCEES website, and on this webpage, it basically tells us which calculators are allowed for the FE exam. So you guys want to really pay attention to the functionality of the calculator you choose to use, because certain calculators, such as the TI-30X and the TI-36X, are very different with the functionalities that they can use. Um, in my opinion, the TI-30X is a little bit harder to use than the TI-36X. Um, and I also found that the TI-36X has a lot more functionality than that of the TI-30X. 
Uh, I'm just I'm mentioning these because these are the ones I'm familiar with and I actually use the TI 36x for my exam and I was able to use the TI 36x for uh, doing vector calcs such as like your dot products and your cross products and you can also use it for like uh, matrices doing calculations with matrices it's a very powerful calculator I was honestly surprised I was able to use it for the FE exam it saved me a lot of time on some questions that would have taken me say six or seven minutes to write out by hand I could do it in a minute or two just put by plugging it in on my calculator and then selecting the right choice um, I'm going to create a video on just some basic functionality of the TI 36x so if you guys want to check that out it should be coming soon so I think the best way to study for a test like the FE exam is to work as many questions as you can become very efficient at answering questions the fe is a time test so you have to answer the questions quickly in order to make it through the test so the more questions you work the better at that you're going to be online there's a ton of reference material where you can get a lot of practice questions and uh, tutorials and reviews for certain subjects that you might be weak in some of the best reference material that I was able to find are these review manual books. So this is the third edition review manual book. Uh, I call it the blue and yellow book. There's a fourth edition I also have. It's a green and yellow book. It has more of the discipline specific um, questions, whereas this one, so if you didn't know, a few years back the FE exam actually kind of took a change of what was presented in the test. The old test used to be more generic. It had uh, topics like thermodynamics and statics in the electrical test because there's just a general test, whereas now they don't include those for the discipline-specific electrical test, which is a good thing for a lot of us because we don't know statics and thermodynamics. So whenever you're using this book, the blue and yellow book, I would be careful with uh, what you study in it because they will have in, this book will have information that you don't need in it such as like statics and the thermodynamics um, based back on that one form that I showed you earlier on the NCEES's website it'll, it breaks down what questions you need to know how to do so keep that in mind whenever you're studying with this book so here's the newer revision of that review manual I was talking about. I call it the green and yellow book. Um, I use both that blue and yellow review manual and this book. Um, whenever I was studying for my FE exam, I didn't really see much difference other than this one had only the information that was needed for the exam for the new discipline specific FE exam. Whereas the blue and yellow one, like I said before, has a lot of extra information. It's also, the blue and yellow book also lacks in digital logic in certain subjects that are more focused now that the uh, exam is discipline specific. So keep that in mind when you're buying these books. They're about the same price as a, uh, as a college book, but they're definitely worth looking into if you're preparing for the FE exam. So the last thing I want to talk about is when you guys can expect to see your results for your FE exam. The results are always posted on a Wednesday and it might be the first Wednesday after your exam or the second Wednesday. So for instance, I took my exam on a Monday. I didn't get my results until the second Wednesday after my exam. In order to see your results, all you have to do is you go to NCEES's website, log into your account, and on the main page of your account, there'll be a box that says pass or fail. If you pass, it will be a green box and that will be it. There won't be a breakdown to say you got this many right, you got this many wrong. It, should, it just tells you you passed. However, if you do fail, there will be a breakdown associated with that and you can see what, uh, what topics you need to improve on so that next time you can pass that exam. That's everything I have on the FE, guys. If you have any other helpful tips for everybody else, please put them down in the comments below. I'm sure everybody would really appreciate it. And if you guys thought this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time.